international students, global students, very important topic, very touchy topic. You probably have known one. You probably are one. We are speaking to Lillian and Sharon, the host of the LNS District Podcast, a platform for the global students to help them thrive as they transition into the United States or wherever for that matter in the diaspora. So if you know an international student, if you're an international student, if you are not familiar with what an international student is, this podcast, this episode is for you. This is Stuck in Middle Podcast. I'm your host, Reflex. Listen, keep it locked after the intro. Hit that subscribe button. Don't go nowhere. You're in for a dope one. Keep it locked. Let's go. So one person is in California right now and another is in Massachusetts. This is the beauty of Zoom. You know, I mean, we can make these things happen. But how did how did this connection happen? How did this this link up happen? Y'all yeah, talk to me, Lillian and Sharon. How did this duo happen? <laughs> okay, so there are two versions to this story, honestly. But I, my version is the truth. Let me just say that. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> no, basically we met. And so we both went to the same school, but then we were living in the same building and we didn't know. So we met like in church, like, you know, I was just being the Christian sister trying to reach out, you know, cause she, she seemed very, you know, like disconnected from church and everything. So I was like, let me just, you know, say hi to her and everything. And I did, I said hi. And then let me pull we this realized one out we were of walking. The dungeon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We realized we were walking to the same place and then, you know, that's how we connected and we've been friends since then. And this was like five years ago. Is your, what's your version? And, and she asked, she's like, oh, can I take you for tea? Like, I'm, look, my years in England, tea is like, take me on tea dates. We're friends. So she's like, can I take you for tea? Oh, I'll take you on a date. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. Sorry, why you, not? See, you always, you she, always bring up dates. It was never a date. Sis. Don't make it seem <laughs> yes. like I was, I really needed the friendship yes. or something. Nah, mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> <It> ain't that deep. <laughs> Are y'all- but, but yeah, yes. Right. She lived on like um, the fifth floor. I lived on the third floor. So mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, I would always like go to her place. Come, to, um, she'd come to my place and stuff. So yeah. What school was this? UMass Law. What'd you oh, do? Okay. UMass Law. So you're both lawyers. No, no UMass, UMass Law. 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 Oh, okay, 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 my baby. Yeah. So, uh, you guys, math, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, man. See, these random states, you know, we, we Africans, <laughs> we stick to the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia, or Texas. We don't do. <laughs> Sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, now I respect it. I respect it. So, are y'all first generation uh, Africans, first generation immigrants? Yes. Yes. So you yes. mentioned you mentioned Sharon. You mentioned you spent time in England. Uh, was that you know did your parents live there before you moving here? What, what was that transition like for you? Um, so I did high school in Nigeria, the whole, um, the whole of my high school in Nigeria, and I moved to England for um, parts of high school again, and my undergraduate degree and my first masters as well, and then. Um, I moved back to Nigeria for something we call NYSC, which is like you serve your country. Mm-hmm. And then I moved here. Um, but the transition was wild because um, it, when I was in England, I didn't go home often. Mm-hmm. So um, there was that transition of like, and and I, I went to boarding school in Nigeria. I don't know how it is in, you know, in your country and stuff, but I, I left for boarding school at eight. So um i had to be independent very quick so it was a transition you know just like getting more and more independent especially in england you have to really really be independent so um even the transition of going back to nigeria and then moving there was like a whole lot of changes that i needed to like make and stuff so yeah that's a lot of transition that's a lot of changes you always you always just be here uh lillian so i also went to high school in ghana it was Mm -hmm. boarding school as well and then i had the opportunity to study um to go to college out of the country and that's how i ended up here yeah and which is which is yeah. great you know in a sense because you know your podcast and L- lns podcast the lns district podcast you know so he's talking about the main focus and correct mm-hmm. me if i'm wrong we're gonna get right into it right now is you know it's like catering to the global student the international student yeah i've had that experience so talk to me first about why did you guys decide to create the lns district what is this about how did the name come about you know what i'm saying what what it is what, what is the lns district Okay, so um, the LNS district is our name, Lillian and Sharon. Mm -hmm. And um, so from just our conversations from, you know, like me, you know, starting to like study here in England for like my second, um, study here in America for my second master's, it was a lot of adjustment I had to make. And not just um, in terms of relating with people, just like even the 
academic like world, it was completely different. For example, in England, like in undergraduate, you do write the dissertation. Here, mm -hmm. it's when you reach like your master's or like PhD, that's when you do like uh, a dissertation or a thesis, as they say. So um, there was a lot that I needed to learn. And then I had to draw up some of the independent um, life that I had carried all the way. I know that like I needed people so that I can better navigate the system. So me and Lydia would have loads of conversations and she'd be like, oh, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Oh, did you know about this? And, you know, I would be like, what? I've never heard of that. So I would like try. She's like, oh, I know this person. Let's go talk to them. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. So with that, it was like there was there was information out there that was given to us by, let's say, for example, the international office. But there was a lot of options that were not explored. And there was a lot of options that were like, if you didn't get to talk to people, or if you didn't like mix with people, you would never know. So we started the LNS district. We're like, you know what? There are lots of people that are coming in and they're not utilizing the system, you know, to its fullest. And they're not navigating the system, you know, in, in a much better and strategic way depending on the goals you have when she comes to this country. So um, we were like, you know what, let's put this out there. Let's, you know, help people out there. Let's help people navigate. Let's help, let's build a community so that we can help each other. Because if, you know, one rule affects like one type of visa or something like that, so student visa, H1B, OPT, it's literally going to affect all of us. So if we're able to help each other to navigate the system well, it would work for us and the goals we have once we come to this country. So yeah, how, how you feel? And about I think it? one thing too. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think one thing too that like um, we one benefit we had was so for me when I first came here, I was in Florida. I initially started school in Florida, so I made a few friends, you know, there. And those friends, ha some of those friends, had been in the country for a while, so they'll tell me, "Oh, don't do it this way, do this." And so when I came here. I was able to, um, so when I finally transitioned to Massachusetts and I met Sharon, um, I had like that information from them as well. And so it was kind of like, okay, um, let me share this information with her as well. I, had, I was lucky enough to have like an auntie who's a college counselor and she's also Ghanaian as well. So she helped me, you know, like navigate in terms of like when it came to like looking for internships and co-ops and like so many different opportunities that were available to me that I didn't know about. And so, like, these are things that, like, you won't find from your international office. And that was kind of, like, the, you know, center of the LNS district. Because they're like, listen, like, it's not fair. If you're a shy person and you don't have, like, you know, you, you don't have the boldness to step up to someone and ask a question or you can't find it online or something, like, this is a hub where you can, you know, just reach out and then you find the information. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the main reason why you know uh, this is kind of like a duh question? But what's the main reason why you know we 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 have students migrating from Africa to come study here, or you know the other parts of the world, whether it's India or the Europe? Um, I think um, the students would like we move because obviously one, I, I believe like the educational system. I can speak on Nigeria; it's not that great. Um, so you can like I remember doing my undergraduate, and there was a guy, a Nigerian professor. I, I studied software engineering um, for my undergraduate, and he told me I also did computer engineering in in a university in Nigeria, and I never seen what the computer looks like. You know, so, you know, there were stories like that and, you know, the the system is very, you know, the best students can still not do well because you have like this bribe, you know, in terms of like bribing the professor. It's like, you know, there's a lot to navigate with that. So um, I believe people are looking forward to that experience of like, you know, having the teaching experience, but yet still being able to apply that work experience that you learn, you know, in your class. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why a lot of people, because then it's like, okay, now they have, I have a little opportunity to like work, which is where you transfer from like your F1 to do your OPT or CPT and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I believe that's why like people like migrate to like, you know, different parts of the world to try, you know, to, you know, do their degrees and stuff like that. So yeah. 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 Uh, Lillian, uh, what did you study? Are you done with your studies? Uh, what did you yeah. study and where are you currently in life? So I, I'm done with college. I'm currently working as well. I'm a practice engineer mm -hmm. um, and I'm just 
you know, working in the biopharmaceutical industry right now. The heck is China. a plastics engineer? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Honestly, everyone asks me that all the time. Um, so basically, it's a, a field in engineering that focuses on teaching us everything about plastics. So like how to manufacture plastic, how to design plastic parts, and how to actually like make plastics and you know we learn about the different plastic materials and everything so it's a very broad but niche field so i can end up working anywhere i can be in the medical industry where i make medical devices or i can be in like you know a packaging device industry where i make like a trash can i can also be in like i can literally work anywhere so it, it places me in a very like great position yeah and it's really interesting honestly because everything is made out of plastic you think about it. so mm. yeah same question for you uh sharon like where what, what study are you doing where are you currently in life okay yes yeah, so i did health informatics and management and i currently work now as a healthcare data analyst for um a company in massachusetts um so yeah that's what i do now Dang, y'all, y'all out here getting it, man. It's some some smart, some smart women, man. <laughs> can, <laughs> yeah. can I can I just can I just say the pink teams in the background look yeah, yeah. really good? Thank yeah, you. We are, you yeah, know, ne- next that. time next time when we have the LNS district, we gotta have you in the studio so y'all can um yes. so we can sit That's and so talk. Yes. Yeah. But I appreciate that, appreciate that. This is Stuck in Middle Podcast, by the way. If y'all, you know, uh, new to the platform, hit that subscribe button. We drop a new interview every week with awesome people like Sharon and Lillian of the LNS District. But yeah. when it comes to when it comes to STEM, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we, we're digging deeper into, you know, like what, what your podcast is about. But first of all, like when it comes to STEM, I know there's a lot of... It's first of all a struggle to get people into STEM. I know Africans, when we grow up, it's like doctor, lawyer, engineer... Um, but you know, it's not women in STEM. What what do y'all think can be the driving factor to bring more, not only international students, but just people in general into the STEM field, even women? So that's like STEM, women in STEM is like something I'm really passionate about, honestly. So I've been working with like, you know, a couple of people back in Ghana to create more awareness. But I think the problem, the reason why we don't have a lot of women in STEM, for me, at least from a personal point of view, is when I was in like, from school to to work right now, there isn't much representation of women and women of color in the STEM field. Mm-hmm. And because it's a male dominated field, to be honest, like mm-hmm. you sit in a classroom and you're literally the only black woman with other white men, literally. Mm-hmm. And um, it's been um, portrayed to be this really hard like field where, you know, you have to be like some Einstein to excel and everything. So I think like, women who have been through or women who are currently in um stem just going back and like starting from very a very young age like from primary school from high schools and even junior high like just presenting stem to them in a more attractive form and like letting them know that okay we are women as well and we're already there and like just sharing from personal experience because for me i really like i i'm re- very passionate about like you know i'm um, sharing your story and really mentoring people and you know helping them go through the journey and making it easier so i think the big one big thing we can do is like you know more representation and i see that a lot this year where like a lot of organizations are focusing on you know going back to like younger kids younger females and you know you know doing like as little as like a little um like experiments and letting them telling them a bit about this like allowing them to really like experience what it is and what the backstory of it and like the science behind everything and so yeah like i think that's something that would really help mm. any, any thoughts on it sharon yeah i i think um what you said is absolutely correct because i wanted to do software engineering because um my my uncle was a computer engineer and i lived with him for a little while and he was always very like you know into computers technology and all of that and i was just like well i actually want to do what my uncle is doing and i actually like when i signed up i was like um nobody it was like three females in my class mm. you know like maybe 89 guys and it was like three females so i was just like for me i was just like okay now i really want to do this because i have to 
point out all those guys and let them know that whatever they're doing, I can do it too. Mm. So um, it was it was very important for me to like you know go through that and actually when after like um, I finished my undergraduate, it was also tricky too because when I would go for interviews, I would see them picking guys over like females and things like that. So. But as Lillian said, right now there's like more, um, there's more females out there. There's more like, um, especially women of color, like, you know, coming into the industry, like, you know, showing that what these guys are doing, we can also do it. So, mm-hmm. and I think even from people back home in like Africa and stuff like that, they have the talent. It's just the way to like nurture it and do things. Because I would see things like, you know, an 11 year old boy making like yeah yeah like a generator out of like something so mm-hmm. like you need to like groom you know mm-hmm. you know the talent and things like that so yeah, yeah yeah is this is this what you know you guys talk about the lns district podcast what is the format like you know do you share just you know your stories like this or what what would somebody coming into the lns district podcast you know get from from the podcast so for the podcast, we mainly focus on international students and, you know, creating resources. So it, it would basically start from us sharing, like, our personal experiences on, like, maybe a topic like, let's say, OPC mm. and how we got our OPC and the steps it took to get there. And then, like, from mistakes we made and lessons learned, we share those experiences with them and then share those resources. And so it's kind of like a way for you to navigate whatever stage you're at in your international student journey Mm -hmm. and also like you know just laugh a bit with like you know the struggles we've been through and like just um stories that we share on there so that's like the format sharon when did you start the uh, start the podcast we started in july july of this year july of this year how was the growth like you know what's what's the growth like for you and you know what's what's been um you know, a lot of a lot of podcasters spring, you know, spring up with great expectations and dreams for their trajectory. And like, you know, when rubber hits the road, uh, you know, it's like that. Is this uh, this is a tough field? So, what what are your two biggest takeaways of? You guys just wrapped up season one, right? What are your two biggest takeaways of season one of the LNF district? I I think one people want to actually know more about this, and they actually want to hear from somebody or people who have gone through the same things. Or and then I the second one is that people actually who are currently in the system, like the universities, like international students and incoming as well, they want that guidance in terms of like okay when you come this is like the housing you should get this is like the procedure you should like follow to. Um, get extra scholarship and stuff like that. So um, I think those are like the big takeaways. So, and I feel like, you know, more people have been reaching out to us and stuff like that. So we just want to keep giving, bringing like subject matter experts on it to like speak more on like certain subjects and things like that. So we we just don't want you to come here and be an international student. We want you to be able to know about your taxes, insurance, you know, your finances, navigating friendships, having a little spring break, you know, things like that. So we want to cover like, you know, the whole experience so that you don't just like come here and get all A's, but you allow the system to also like get into you and, you know, you be able to navigate it as well. Yeah. Mm, I dig it. Uh, Lillian, what, what does season two, when, when does season two premiere and like, you know, what additions or innovative changes are you guys bringing to season two? Um, For season two, I think we're focusing more on like the professional side of being an international student. Like it's still in the works. So this is not like, you know, like everything that is going to happen, but then we're having more like guest interviews as well. And um, we're taking things up to the next level, you know, diving a bit deeper and, you know, balancing it with like serious and fun. And um, cause I think a lot of people are really connecting with like, it's like, where we are at in the world, like everyone wants to connect on a certain level. And so people being able to connect with us is really placing us in in a very unique position to, um, you know, be able to provide information. And like, you know, we had like for our season finale, like live events, we had like, we're able to get like an immigration attorney on there who, you know, which is like such, is like gold in the international student world. Mm-hmm. And so being able to, you know, have such a really good resource is mm-hmm. like something we're bringing and focusing a lot more in the second season. So, yeah. 
Mm. What is working, you know, with each other? Talk to you guys by yourselves. I know you guys, you know, as we said earlier, y'all, y'all be y'all be linking up since Massachusetts days, you know, back in like way. <laughs> but what is actually working together at, as you know, on a business idea like the LNS District? Talk to you guys by yourself. Good name, go. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, I think we like. For me, I think it really solidified our friendship because it's like working together can really, you know, make or break a relationship. And I think it's really helped us know how to communicate with each other much better and like, you know, be able to like just balance everything really well. Because like sometimes it could be like, you know, a business call and like, you know, we have to transition into just, you know, just having like regular banter because we, we still have a friendship and everything. So I think for me, it's taught me how like to strengthen our relationship and how strong it is as well. So yeah. mm. sure you must answer. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was gonna I was gonna say, um, so I think definitely communication and um I think that's you know, not just communication because we're friends, but communication now in terms of like and switching the type of communication because when we're in like, okay, let's do stuff on the podcast. I, I tend to be like, okay, we're taking notes, we're having meeting notes, all of that. I'm very like strict. And so also like sweet then switching to like, oh, how was your day? What's going on? Let's this, let's, you know, plan a trip and stuff like that. So I believe like it sort of has to be better friends and as well as then um allowing each other like each other's ideas just like bloom as well because I can have like very separate ideas in terms of like oh let's do this blah 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 and then she's like oh well that doesn't really work because of this because of that and they're like okay well let's put it in the check back later and stuff like that so I think we're just allowing each other bloom and you know with if, if, even the podcast you know she's like engineering so she's getting like calls for like oh come speak to women or young girls for like engineering so it's like I'm like Get on it. Don't even say you're going to think about it. So, in a way, we're also like pushing each other to just like yeah. um come out of like our shells and stuff like that. So yeah. Mm-hmm. How you know yeah. um you know Sharon you first and then uh, I mean uh, Lillian you first and then Sharon. How can we here in the diaspora, not only in the United States but across the world, make the international or global oh. student first of all. Is it just an interchangeable ch- uh, term, global student, international student, or is there distinct? Is there you know distinct difference? I think there's a difference, honestly. Go ahead. Being a global student, <laughs> um, I I think it's different because being a global student, you have to have certain um, mindset. And that's kind of like a topic we broke down in our um, in our last season. Because being a global student, you have to be able to be extremely resilient. And but then you can just be an international student and then just say, okay, I come to, I'm going to school, get my A's, and I'm done. But being a global student, you ask more questions, you put yourself in um, unique positions, you um, you know, you make the journey a more like practical one. You don't just stick with um, people that like are look like you are in your community you you know allow the journey to pass through you like Sharon said earlier and so um I think you can't really entertain you can be an international student who's a global student but yeah I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah yeah I get you yeah so how can how can we make you know what I mean like in, in the diaspora whites Hispanics people who are not from Africa make the experience more better in your view uh, for international students or global students, how can we welcome them? How can we embrace them? How can we make the experience better? Because it's one thing to say, hey, give them all this game, you know, in the LNS district podcast, say, hey, this is how to make the most of this time. But, you know, it's also one thing for people in these countries to, you know, well receive them. So, what are some pointers? It's like, yo, make these people's experience better. For them. Um, I believe um, in terms of just like, building the community and which is what the lns district is about it you don't have to be from africa you don't have to be from india you know like when we had our live um season one live um event there was people calling in from jamaica from um pakistan from india so it was a combination of um countries and that's the thing so we don't have to stick to like being african or something and international students we really understand our struggles because um 
a regular student would not understand the struggle of waiting for your OPT card, where it's like, oh, I'm getting job offers, but I'm waiting for my OPT card. And this company is about to tell me now that they're going to withdraw their offer. So that's why we need this community. And, you know, and, and I feel like the, 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 the struggles we face, like the Hispanics face it too, like, you know, even in terms of just like job discrimination, things like that, or like, you know, discrimination on campus and stuff like that. So there's all this like codes that we can face, we can rally around each other to actually start to break those barriers and start, um, start to create environments for conversations to happen. And for people who don't usually see people like us, they can like step up to us, ask us questions so that we can have that personal connection with understanding our struggles as well. So, yeah. Mm. And I think one thing that like, um people living in um, like americans can also help us with is really understanding that like we don't like it's a journey for us and we don't necessarily like for example one one clear example for me like the black lives matter movement when i first came here like i literally i did not identify myself as like black i thought like we were two separate things but then when when it comes to police brutality for example we're all one you know, where all, we all fall in one category. And so, like, experiences like that, like, we don't understand what Black Americans have been going through all these years living in this country. And then we come here, and then maybe we may act a certain way or we may do certain things. And so, it's for, at least, when it comes to the Black American um, community, it would be your responsibility to kind of educate us as well and not expect us to, you know, automatically, like, start um, behaving in a certain way or understanding certain things. And when it comes to job resources as well, if you are in a position where you have the right connections and everything, like understanding our journey and knowing what it takes to even get employed as an international student, you can be the person who would, you know, put in a good word and be like, oh no, like maybe the sponsoring um, situation is not as complicated as, you know, it seems when you read about this and everything. So like learning about our journey would put you in the right, would put you in a position to really help us so i think mm -hmm. that's why we're here like sharing stories and everything so if you're not an international student and you're listening like at least you know that oh, okay this is why you know when we're trying to plan a trip to you know the cayman islands sis needs to apply for a whole ass visa and all that so mm -hmm. you know it's very different in that way but what's your what's your favorite episode of season one i would say i would say my favorite one was like um spring break and I would say the last episode as well, where we had two guys, Ayo and Nekosa. So they were like, they went in, dropped like advice. They were fun. They almost like wrapped up the whole thing about season one. So I really, really enjoyed that. So season two is going to be so late. So watch yeah, out yeah. for that. There we go. <laughs> yeah. um, I really like the OPT um, episode. What is OPT, by the way? It's optical practical training, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like um, um, America giving us an, an opportunity to work after college. So mm -hmm. it's for one year, but then if you're in STEM, you are allowed to work for three years. So mm -hmm. it's like a big deal because you know that's when you can actually make good use of. That's when you don't code, here. you don't learn. Yeah, speaking of, speaking I mean, you can work <laughs> and get paid and everything. Speaking of, speaking of that, you know, I'm saying like uh, the global international student, especially during in you know. COVID times in here in the United States have faced a lot of struggles, you know, it's like with the Trump administration deportation, for example, you know, not going into politics too, too much, but what other struggles do you see a prominent around, you know, for, for the international student that they face? Like, you know, the OPT, for example, you know, what, what's another one? So, um, I know they were saying like to ban the student visas or like certain countries and things like that. Um, but at the same time, I feel, um, I feel like the there's still things that are up in the air that are being discussed when it comes to international students, and I feel like um, I feel like we just need to keep, and that's one of the things we say on our podcast that you need to keep watching the news, you need to keep looking at the news and seeing what's going on because. We can never fully know, like, okay, what's next that's going to happen. So we just need to stay glued to, like, the news. We just need to stay glued to, like, um, like the UC USCIS website, which is where we post news on, like, these visas and stuff like that. So um, I believe 
just keeping the news and then also knowing what your status is and then knowing your options because one of the things we spoke about on the podcast was like knowing your options in terms of like you know going back to speak your school yeah. and say okay can you guys give me some classes where i can come on campus so that i'm not like um i'm not um going to be deported or something like that um and we also you know the lawyer that we had on a um, event you also mentioned like um know you have to just know your status know your and make sure that whatever you do your visa is like up to date once your visa is up to date you can transition into different sides or like say okay i'm in f1 now i can take a break i can do this i can go on cpt for now you know and things like that so there's options but the things that you just need to be aligned with the news of what's going on mm-hmm. yeah yeah lillian what's a um h1b visa so it's a working visa that um, you can only get when a company sponsors you. And so like after or whilst you're on your OPT or whilst you're working after college, some company starts the process for you where you transition from being a student to uh, to being um, in the working class. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and it's valid for three years and you can renew it for another three years. So it's like... You know, it's also kind of like gold for an international mm-hmm. student when you get that. Yeah. What percentage of, you know, international students will y'all say actually succeed? That's a good question. Uh, I would say, honestly, I would say a good 85%, right? In terms of like the universities, because honestly, I feel like international students carry this thing of when I'm in university now, I have to dwell. I have to get aid. I have to get scholarship. So, and one of the big things is scholarship. To get on scholarship, what do you have to do? Get all A's. So, they um, they make sure they're on point with their grades, right? And I feel like even after like university, maybe that number increases because now you have things like H one B, where it's almost where it is a lottery system. Mm-hmm. So they why it doesn't mean that get it right you apply for your opt obviously that takes time but like um in terms of schooling i think international students are doing very very well international students are like you know they're the ones getting 4.2 gpa they're the ones getting like you know getting called by like google and stuff like that so yeah i think you know in terms of succeeding we're like up there Mm. i think honestly it also depends on what you term as succeeding because in my opinion, I think every international student succeeds. Whether you stay in this country to work after or you go back home, you're leaving with a different mindset. And most of the time, when people move back home from studying in America or in England or wherever, like you go wanting to make significant change in your country or you go wanting to having this business mindset and you just don't go back the same. So, and for me, I think that's success on its own. So, yeah. Hmm. What, preach, uh, preach, preach. <laughs> what advice? What advice would, would y'all give? You know, then um, you, not podcasters, new podcasters, but you know, international students. I know y'all drop a lot of gems in the podcast, which people should absolutely go check out. Season one of the LNS District podcast, but you know, just as creators, podcast creators, and um, you know, students looking to come into the international world. What advice would y'all give? I would say, like, really. Um, connect make a lot of connections like in your mm. first like two years or first three years really don't just stick in your room don't just stay with your classes or whatever like make sure you attend like events make sure you join organizations to make sure like you're putting yourself out there because if you want to stay in the country it starts from the day you step in this country like it starts from you interacting um with your professors it starts with your advisor knowing you by name and by face because that's how I got my first um, internship. My advisor mm-hmm. was like, oh, I know this girl. Like, you know, give her an interview. And that's how it works. So when we say connections back home, connections here are much deeper. And so really, um, you know, making good use of the resources about, around you. And most important thing, ask questions. Like, I don't know if it's how, like, Africans grew up or whatever. But, like, you know, there's this fear that, you know, if you, like, come off too strong or whatever. Like, it's like you're being rude or something. But... Here, like I've learned for myself that asking a lot of questions really gets me places. So that's the advice I'll give to anyone. Hmm. What advice you got for podcasters, Sharon? I would say like don't wait to have like the perfect, you know, setup. Don't wait to like once you have that idea and you feel like people would want to listen to this, 
start. Mm-hmm. Don't wait till like you have everything set off and a whole like plan and stuff like that. Just start and you know see how it goes. But also like plan plan as much as you can, but don't delay like starting as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I would say. And then reach out to other like podcasters. You know, listen to other podcasts like you guys. I saw the episode the um, entanglement. Um, oh my god! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I'll say. Uh, Lilia, what, 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 what plans do you have for Africa or Ghana as a plastic engineer? <laughs> um. So, honestly, I know, like you know, if you say you want to make like change, it's a big. It sounds really big, but for me, I'm focusing on the little changes I can make. So I've been partnering with like a lot of um, women in STEM organizations in Ghana, you know, even working on starting one for myself where we create awareness for, to get like more women interested in STEM. And then also trying to work on with companies who are um, focusing on like, you know, recycling in Ghana, because that's also like a really big thing. And, you know, just doing the best I can with the information and the knowledge that I've gained here and, um, you know, step by step will you know make that change so that's same, same question for you sure um for me um so i'm a huge advocate for women's health and especially like pregnant women as well so um one of the things i always like talk about is like you know black women's health here like in america and you know one of the things that we lack a lot not just in nigeria but in africa is health care and um for me it's to like partner with like um Two years ago, I was working with someone who was just, um, we were out there just like having people do like SCD tests. We're making like kids, especially like AIDS and stuff like that. So, um, and you know, one thing I always do because my birthday is in October is to like, you know, donate or do like the walk or something like that for breast cancer Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, one of the things that, or multiple things that I want to do is just like going back to the healthcare. And another thing too that I want to go back to is like the education because the education springs out the healthcare because how they're going to deliver the healthcare comes from how they've been taught in like class, how they've been taught in, you know, learning things in the internship. So that's what they give back to like the patient. So um, eventually I would go back into education, but right now I just want to focus on like healthcare and, you know, getting like, you know, people to like upgrade their systems. Let's move from the really folder based system and like paper, like let's move to like the, computers and like having um healthcare systems and stuff like that yeah i dig it how can people get in contact with y'all you know what I'm saying the lns district podcast the igs all that good stuff people want to find out more you can follow us on instagram we're at the ls district and on twitter it's ls district and we do have a page on facebook as well and like if you want to like you know partner with us or um just send us questions or whatever you can email us at the Ellis district at gmail.com. So that's how you reach us. Uh, the uh, personal DMs not uh, available. Oh, personal. Well, my. Don't say like that. If you say personal DMs, that's. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to help somebody out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I dig it. Listen, we have had the pleasure and honor, distinct honor, speaking with the hosts. Of the LNS District, a platform and podcast for the global international students to help you thrive as you transition into the United States. This has been dope, man. Like, I have learned a lot. See, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have a lot of friends who are international students, and uh, I wish I knew a, a lot of what I've learned, not only from today, but the little that I've heard from you know, you guys in season one that would have made me make their experience yeah. more better. Um, and so, I, I, I encourage everybody to check your podcast out and uh, hit them up, see how you can, you know, get more information and definitely share it with people you know who you know are coming over or who just landed you know what i mean and i appreciate y'all joining us this has been really dope stuff sharon and lily and appreciate y'all thank you so much thank you thank you we so really much Flex. next time we we have to come to your um the, yes. like you have to be on site you have to <laughs> it, be it looks it looks lit it out looks there so yeah. <laughs> look get, get us like some, gotta, co- some cocktails y'all gotta yeah, come to this more than tea. <laughs> i know right listen it, it, that's yo if anything 
previous guests know you can go watch it on YouTube. We you, we are ready. Whatever you need, whether it's the brown or the red or the water, okay. whatever you need. Humble. We'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, we gotta have y'all come back, update us on everything I got going Definitely. on. Definitely. Definitely be happy to host down the studio. Uh this is the Camino Podcast platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, creators of African descent. We hear stories, ideas, and experiences of how we can break the mold. We always say, you know what I mean? Being from Africa, our parents said, be doctor, lawyer, engineer. And we say in Ghana, we want to be entrepreneurs. But these are people who are killing it. Plastic engineer. You know what I mean? And uh, Cheryl, what do, you, what do you, I forget. Health informatics. I cannot spend informatics. <laughs> it's okay. They're killing it. So listen, uh, we, are, we are doing great things out here. Um, and uh, we, we we deserve our respect and we're going to get our respect. But um, definitely hit that subscribe button and the ringer if you are not done so yet. So you get updates every time we drop something new. Appreciate y'all listening. Shout out to AK in the background producing this team. Shout out to Ma who made this episode happen. If you want to support us, go to SITMPodcast.com and you shop merch. That's how we're able to drive this machine. And uh, read a blog while you're there. And uh, we appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all next week. I am Flex, your host. Peace.